This is Nira, and I'll be giving you the grand tour of the brand new Hexels 2. When you open Hexels, you're immediately greeted by a fancy new file window. In this window, you can pick an existing template, open a recent file, or load up a sample file to boost your inspiration levels. Before I jump into the tutorial, I'd first like to bring your attention to the newly designed interface, which gives you full control of the layout. You can detach windows, drag to sort them into tabs, Leave them afloat or dock them on the right. Now let's take a look at the painting tools. Click the icon on the top right to show how the grid matches the current shape mode. In this case, I'm using classic hexagons. Your tools are lined up on the left. These include your standard brush, an outline brush for smaller details, selection tools, and a gradient tool to name a few. There's a diverse selection of grids to choose from under the shape tab such as Pixel for good old-fashioned pixel art, Custom for your own bespoke grid, and Veroni for a mosaic effect. Our most popular and powerful mode, Trixel, allows you to paint with all sorts of different shapes on the same canvas. Triangles and hexagons, ramps and shards, and rectangles all fit together snugly on the same grid. A powerful feature within Trixels is the super grid. When Super Grid is checked, the grid remembers the brush shape that you're painting with. When you check Preserve Super Grid, the previous subgrids are remembered, which allows you to quickly repaint those areas. For even more detail, you can subdivide your grid by clicking Run Script, Subdivide Trixels. The Document tab contains global settings like Canvas and Grid options. Under Effects, we have a great feature called Halftone Mode. When enabled, brush size is controlled by opacity. If you're using a drawing tablet, you can choose opacity in the pen pressure drop-down menu, which will vary the size of your shape. Moving on to Colors and Palette. You have two different color pickers to work from, and every color you paint with will turn into swatches in your palette. A super cool feature that the palette window has is the ability to create gradients. Place a color on one swatch, add another parallel color, and then drag the first color to the second to create a gradient. For a final touch, use Texture and Glow to enhance your piece. Both tabs have preset libraries where you can pick existing maps. Customize the look by importing your own Glow and Texture maps. You can add multiple textures and change their individual settings Let's take a look at our shiny new animation system. Bring up the animation editor by clicking on the Timeline tab. To switch back to Standard Layers view, simply click the Layers tab. Animation in Hexels is done frame by frame, and each frame has its own stack of layers. You can create layers first and switch to Timeline, or choose to start in Timeline mode and add layers where needed. Use a thumbnail slider to set the size of the thumbnails, choose your desired frame rate and initial frame count in the text boxes here. The plus buttons in the middle are for adding frames. The one on the left adds a frame with a normal cell, while the one on the right adds a frame with a key cell. A key cell repeats every frame until it hits another key cell. You can also double click your cell to turn it into a key cell. The plus buttons on the far left add and duplicate layers. And last but not least, these are your playback controls. 
For my animation, I'm going to add streams of water coming down from the beams. I've used the outline tool to paint the stream and shifted the highlights down by one unit after every cell. I've used the standard brush tool to paint shards that emulate the splash detail. And I have repeated this method for the remaining cells. You'll notice that I've used the onion skinning button to make sure I was not painting over the same shard of the previous cell. Now that I've got my waterfall, I'm going to animate glow and opacity to add a nifty shimmering effect to the water. Start by clicking the key icons next to each slider. This lets you set a different glow and opacity value for each frame and animate the properties over time. Before exporting, I use the frame tool to define which section of the image will be saved out. You can use the free framing mode to drag out an arbitrary selection or use the fix mode to snap the tool to your desired resolution. To export your animation, click File Export Animation. You'll see a window with the option to export a sprite sheet, animated GIF, or a folder of images for later composition. And that's a wrap on our introduction to Hexels 2. If you created a masterpiece, feel free to submit it to any of these social media platforms. We'd love to see it. Thank you for watching and be sure to check out our website to learn more about Hexels. that focuses on educational virtual reality experiences that inspire and creators of Stonehenge VR. In our first year as a company, we've met some fantastic people who've helped us progress quicker than we ever would have imagined and given us some unforgettable memories. So we wanted to share with you the impact those moments have had on Voyager VR in 2016. In November of 2015, Christian decided to teach himself how to develop VR software in the Unreal Engine over a three month period. Shortly after, he created our first educational experience, Stonehenge VR. Since then, we've heard from many people about the lives we've touched, have been featured on some of the biggest tech and entertainment vlogs, had television network A&E film a short documentary about our mission and what it's like owning a VR company together, became a launch title on HTC Vive's storefront, Viveport, and have installed VR exhibits in two of the most iconic museums in the country. As you can see, we've had a busy year, but how did this journey start? After the first build of Stonehenge VR was uploaded, we received a touching message from Curtis Robinson, whose terminally ill father was finally able to virtually tour Stonehenge, a travel destination he had always wanted to visit, but never found the time. My dad was diagnosed with liver cancer 
very late. I think that he'll be able to live the rest of his days knowing that he's seen history, a slice of something that for him is really pretty spectacular. We also got reactions like this one from a woman that grew up near Stonehenge but didn't really appreciate the historic landmark until now. It reminded you of like the beauty of things. I feel like me personally, I guess I take things for granted maybe, but that I was like, wow, it's such an amazing creation. This was the spark that inspired us to keep moving forward in this direction. Shortly after that, we managed to catch the attention of the Pacific Science Center in Seattle, who invited us out to set up a public exhibit of Stonehenge VR. Once there, we were placed within the Science Center's iconic laser dome facility and their History of 3D room. This is the History of 3D room. While we were in Seattle, we even had an amazing opportunity to actually go to Valve Software Headquarters and demo Stonehenge VR in the same room where the original HTC Vive was first created and tested. Another huge milestone for us was working directly with HTC themselves, who asked us to be a launch title on their storefront Vive port. In addition to that, they commissioned us to translate Stonehenge VR into Mandarin Chinese. And have included us in several holiday bundles, including Christmas and Valentine's Day. And that brings us to where we are now, the museum at Prairie Fire in Overland Park, Kansas, stationed right next to one of only three casts in the world of the very first Tyrannosaurus Rex ever discovered, this is our second museum exhibit this year, and what a treat it's been to see people of all ages learn about Stonehenge through our application. So in conclusion, we wanted to say thank you to everyone who has supported us through our first year. Thank you for believing in us and sharing our vision of the potential of applications like Stonehenge VR. We have more exciting opportunities around the corner, and we can't wait to update you on what's next. In Marty Thinks Fourth Dimensionally, you play the role of Marty, a small robot on a quest to reunite with his long-dead master. Along Marty's journey, you will encounter many puzzles requiring the use of Marty's abilities. The core ability of the game is the TED-1, a device which allows you to perform specific actions and then go back in time to coordinate with your past self. Combined with other abilities, such as fireballs and ice bolts, shields and rockets, Marty will confidently face every challenge he encounters.
Vegas Movie Studio 14. Create simply. Your creative storytelling partner. Enjoy an intuitive workflow with a brand new look. And experience powerful video editing with simplicity and fun. Optimize your footage and share it with everyone. Vegas Movie Studio 14. Meet Rita. By day, she's an avid birdwatcher from the sleepy village of Morton in Marsh. Also by day, she's a member of an elite World War II bomber crew, and we've been through a lot together. Haven't we, Rita? She's nodding internally. Now, Rita is an expert engineer, her skills honed through countless successful missions and daring escapes. So, in the unlikely event I find myself in a pinch, she can step in and... Oh gosh, Rita, no! I can't believe this. We've been together since you were level one! <laughs> right, I suppose I should get a replacement in. <laughs> Meet Elizabeth, a 25-year-old amateur boxer from Hastings. She's also a member of an elite World War II bomber crew and is a battle-hardened gunner. Oh, she's shot down more enemy fighters than you've had fried breakfasts and is... Oh, shoot. Let's recruit someone else. Here's Leroy. Now, Leroy's a great guy. He's your pilot and that means... Oh, fudging crumbs. You know what? Maybe you should have a go at this. Well fought, ladies and gents. Well fought. I'll never forget you. Apart from you, Leroy. You're a bit rubbish, if I'm honest.